안녕하세요 이영미입니다 제가 있는 플로이다 템파에서 미네스타 트윈스 스프링 캠프지인 해먼드 스타디움까지는 보통 2시간 30분 정도가 소요됩니다 거리가 멀기 때문에 거기를 가려면 하루가 소요된다고 생각해야 되겠죠 지난번 롯데자이언츠에서 코치 를 맡았던 헹크 콩거 코치와의 인터뷰를 위해서 해머드 스타디움을 찾았다가 당시 카를로스 코리아 선수가 미디어를 대하는 모습이 매우 인상적이었던 터라 오늘 다시 해머드 스타디움을 찾았습니다. 카를로스 코리아 선수를 인터뷰하기 위해 기다리다가 지난해 토미전 수술을 받고 한창 재활 중인 마에다 켄타와도 재미있는 인터뷰를 할수 있었습니다. 이날은 마에다 켄타를 찾아온 특별한 손님이 있었는데요. 바로 지난 시즌 세이브 라이온스에서 은퇴를 선언했던 마스작가 다이스케였습니다. 현재 야구 해설위원으로 활약 중인 그는 마에다 선수를 인터뷰하러 미네스타 훈련장을 찾았다가 썸타임즈랑도 만날 수 있었는데요. 마에다 켄타와 마스작가 다이스케 소식은 다음 영상을 통해 소개하겠습니다. 다시 본론으로 돌아와서 카를로스 코리아 선수 이야기를 해보겠습니다. 카를로스 코리아는 지난 시즌 종료 후에 메이저리그 스토브리그 최대어로 꼽히면서 FA 시장에서 그가 어느 팀과 계약을 맺을지 관심이 집중됐었죠. 푸에르 토리코 출신인 코리아는 2012년 신인 드래프트에서 1차 1번으로 휴스턴 에스트로스에 입단해서 2015년에 빅리그에 데뷔 후 지금까지 현역 최고의 유격수 중한 명으로 꼽히고 있습니다. 타격이면 타격, 수비면 수비 등 타자로서 모든 걸 갖췄다고 할수 있는 코리아 선수는 원 소속팀인 휴스턴으로부터 5년에 1억 6천만 달러의 계약 조건을 제시받았지만 정중히 거절하고 f a 시장에 나왔습니다. 하지만 메이저리그 노사협상 문제로 직장 폐쇄가 시작되면서 코리아는 MLB 노사 문제가 해결되기만을 기다려야 했었죠. 지난 1월 스카프라스와 새로운 에이전트 계약을 맺고 FA를 데뷔했던 카를로스 코리아의 최종 선택지는 미네스타 트윈스였습니다. 미네스타는 카를로스 코리아와 3년에 1억 530만 달러의 계약을 맺었고요. 2022년, 2023년 각각 시즌이 끝난 뒤에 FA 자격을 다시 취득할 수 있는 옵트아웃 조항도 추가했습니다. 계약이 늦어지면서 새로운 팀에 합류하는 시기가 다소 늦춰졌던 카를로스 코리아 선수. 뉴욕 양키스에서 트레이드된 지오 어셸라와 동병상련의 마음으로 미네스타에서 팀메이트를 이루며 적응해 나간 그는 평소 이런저런 구설이 있는 선수지만 미네스타에선 특유의 친화력으로 선수들과 또 팬들과 친밀한 모습을 보여주려고 노력하는 모습이 인상적이었습니다. 인터뷰 내내 미소를 잃지 않았던 카를로스 코리아 선수의 인터뷰를 소개합니다. Yes, I want to thank all the Korean fans. Thank you guys for your support. Love you guys. Um, I stay ready uh, throughout the off season. I always believe that you gotta show up to spring training ready, not show up to spring training to get ready. Um, so for me, that's that's always been my belief. So ever since I've been in the big leagues, I showed up re ready to spring training, and this was no different. I was ready. I was in optimal shape. Um, and then you know, once I got here, it was all, all about getting that rhythm and that timing at the plate. Yeah, it's different, but I love it. I like it. The treatment here has been amazing ever since I got here. You know, I feel like part of the family already in such a short time. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy here. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, experience is very important in this game, and uh, you know, we have a lot of really good, talented players in this uh, in this organization. So you know, I'm really looking forward uh, to a great year uh, for this organization. Yeah, once I was a free agent, you know, uh, you you don't know what to expect. Obviously, you don't know where you're going. Um, you know, you're going through the whole negotiations and the lockout happened. Um, so after that, it was just crickets, like you, you didn't hear from no one. Um, but I have my son, I have a four month old son. He was born in the off season. So that kept me pretty busy, that kept me distracted. So I didn't think too much about that during the lockout. I was more focused on my son and enjoying my time with him. I feel like right now, right now being a baseball player because my wife has done such a great job. So she, she helps in a big way and she takes really good care of him. Um, but I think as he gets older and then you, you got to start you know, teaching more stuff and you know, raising him to be a good uh, human being, then I think that would be a lot harder. Are you going to teach him baseball as well? If he likes it, if he likes it, obviously he's going to grow up around it because I, I hope to play you know, more years so he can watch me play and you know, he can be in the clubhouse with me. So if he likes it, I would love to teach him. Uh, no, I, I had no rush at the time. I, just, I was waiting for, for the deal that made sense for me and my family and uh, here when I talked to Derek, our, our president, and talked to GM and, and Rocco, our manager, you know, I felt like this was going to be a place for me to feel like, you know, I was part of a family. So, 
made the decision and uh, you know, very happy with that decision. Um, you know, he's a, he's a baseball guy and uh, you know, through the process, I felt like that was the right decision for me and my family and uh, so I called him up and uh, you know, I told him that I wanted him to represent me and you know, made the, the change. I love the ballpark, I love the city, I love the food there. Um, and also, you know, when once I talked to them, they made it seem like this was a, a family uh, type of place to be in. So, and that's what I was looking for, somewhere I could feel like I was part of a family and everybody was together and they wanted to win. So, uh, for me, it's, it's all about winning, right? So, I want to be able to bring that to the fans in Minnesota. I was, it was crazy, you know, with the lockout added to it, it was, it was definitely uh, different than, than I thought, but uh, it was a great experience, learning experience. Uh, through, through it all, so you know, now I can talk to players that are going to free agency and I can prepare them mentally for what they're about to go through. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it's a special place. Obviously, I spent you know, 10 years of my career with the organization, uh, but at the same time, you, in this sport, you gotta learn how to move, up, move on quick. Um, you know, it's, it's a business, so every owner's gonna do whatever they think is best for their teams. And uh, you know, here I felt wanted. I felt like they wanted me to be part of this organization. So you know, you gotta move on quick. Now these are this is my family. These are my teammates. So obviously, I'm gonna love the the, the guys in in the Astros organization forever. But um, this is my new family now. Oh, if I had a lot of coaches through my career, from when I was eight years old back in Puerto Rico, um, Jamie Rivera. He, you know, I worked on my defense with him since I was little, and then. When I got to the Astros, you know, working with Joe Espada, uh, the bench coach and infield coach there, helped me improve my game a lot also, and my dad, you know, working with my dad every single day. So I, I had a lot of help, um, so there's a lot of people I'm thankful for. I wish I was 6'1", not 6'4", uh, as a shortstop, but this is what God gave me, and I've been able to manage uh, with the 6'4". Six, six um, so yeah, it's, it's a little bit tough for a shortstop, but... I think I've, I've done all right. Did you ever consider maybe changing up different, to a different position? Uh, no, not yet. I mean, um, if I keep playing elite defense at shortstop, I'm going to stay as long as I can. And then when I feel like time is right, then I have always the option of moving to third. Mm -hmm. But for now, when I play shortstop for, for, for the future right now, I want to be at shortstop. Um, definitely the hardest times are, you know, when you go through injuries and you can't be on the field, when you're struggling. Um, but that's part of the game, right? And that's part of the, you know, the thrill of it all that you love. Um, about this game, it's never easy, right? So it's a constant work and constant search for perfection that you're never gonna achieve. Um, so for me, it's uh, I've always been in love with this game ever since I was five years old, and I'm forever gonna be in love with the game. So I just love being out there with my teammates. Uh, just mental, mental, you know, working with your mental and staying positive and having the right people around you uh, to help you get through those moments. You know, having a, a supporting cast that can help you, you know, move forward. You know, and in my case, my wife, my family, my parents, you know, the team around me, um, they're the ones that keep me going every single day. Now my son. Mm. I just believe in just speaking the truth, right? And uh, whatever the truth is, is the truth is. Nowadays, the truth helps, hurts a lot of people. I um, mean, that's the society we live in right now. But, um, you know, I always speak my mind, but I speak with the truth. Um, so, you know, with my friends and, and, and the, the people are, that I'm loyal to and they're loyal to me, they know how I am and you know, if, if, if you do something that I don't agree with, I will let you know. And that's just the, the person I am. I don't like to go behind people's back, I just like to be straightforward, like you said. And like the Derek Jeter kind of thing too. Oh yeah, that, that, got, that got taken out of context a little bit. Mm -hmm. you know, Derek Jeter is a player that I grew up watching right. and you know, he was my favorite player growing up. Um, and that got taken out of context a little bit because um, the interview was two hours long and they only picked 10 seconds of a clip. Um, but yeah, I got the utmost respect for Jeter and you know, I didn't mean to disrespect him in any way. Main goal is to be a Hall of Famer for sure. You know, that's, that's always been the goal. Um, growing up with my dad, we never talked about money, we never talked about any of that. We talked about um, showing the world that hard work will pay off and that the talent that I have, I can show it to the world and hopefully inspire a lot of kids to play like me and eventually get into the Hall of Fame. So that's still the ultimate goal. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much.